It seems odd that an entire neighborhood and strangers living hours away would come out to wish someone happy birthday. But the Weinberger family is blessed to live in a very special community that rose before dawn to pull off a remarkable surprise. I see a sea of yellow, everything. Early Wednesday morning, some 200 yellow colored vehicles, including sports cars, construction equipment, and buses, gathered near the Weinberger's home in Alexandria. Some drove through the night. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Patricia Jones Johnson, and I'm a station at Fort Hamilton, New York. They came after hearing about Whitaker Weinberger's Bumblebee birthday surprise. At such a young age, he's bought more than all of us have, and I'm just so honored to be here. Whitaker fought stage four neuroblastoma the first few years of his life. I mean, it's been a good two and a half, three years of cancer, cancer hell. He was always too sick to have a proper birthday, but now that he's doing better, his mom Erin hatched a plan. Hi, thank you. Weeks ago, she asked anyone with a yellow car, similar to Whitaker's beloved bumblebee toy from Transformers, to line his morning walk to school on this, his fourth birthday. Thank oh you God. so much, it's beautiful. So many people came on foot and in yellow cars, that the Alexandria Sheriff's Department helped with traffic control. I'm completely overwhelmed. I'm so thankful. This is all community coming together and it's amazing. And it's fair to say Whitaker was wide eyed the entire mile walk to school. I want to keep them all. You want to keep them all? Thank you. Despite the unrealistic dreams of a four year old, Whitaker did not walk away with any life size bumblebees. Thank you, everybody. But his family left knowing that good people from far and wide exist around every corner. It's amazing. I can't believe how great this is. I can't believe how many people showed up. Such an insanely great community that we live in. Maybe the greatest gift on this day came in the simplest package. It's a card addressed, Dear Whitaker, my name is Frank. I'm 12 years old and I'm a childhood cancer survivor as well. I'm almost a year into remission. I am extremely happy for you and impressed of how strong you are. Have an amazing fourth birthday. Amazing indeed. I'm Jay Korf for ABC 7 News. So I just came in here to get a cup of coffee and I saw the stand over here um, with second story cards. Writing a holiday card to a friend or a loved one says you care. And a little spark of happiness to know that somebody out there is thinking about them. But last week in a cafe in D.C., people pen notes of kindness to strangers who don't often get Christmas cards. I know this can be one of the hardest times of the year and know that there are people that want to help and are thinking about you. Can, can make all, make all the, the difference. difference. Warmest, Warmest wishes, wishes, Nick Silvestri. Nick, Silvestri. Nick Silvestri's card went to Craig Thompson, a former stockbroker who plunged into homelessness due to a gambling addiction. It recognizes me in, in some sort of a human capacity and maybe not as a number or a digit or a nameless face. Hello friend, please know that I see you and you are important to me. We are not so different, taking it one day at a time. I, I wish you warmth and, and safety, safety and, and joy in the, in the new year. So, so, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer Berger's card ended up going to Mariana Alas. Thank you. Alas worked for a time on the streets to survive after her family cast her aside during her transition. It's a lot. There are a lot of emotions. The person behind this project is Reed Sandridge. So we've been collecting cards for about a month. Sandridge runs Second Story Cards, a company that hires people who have experienced homelessness, like Eric Thompson Bay. Yeah, I've been in the shelter many Christmas, no decorations, no Murray Christmas, none of that. I know, I know what they're going through. God has a plan for you. Keep your head high and remember, remember you, you are, are blessed. blessed. Eric Thompson, Eric Thompson homeless for 19 years, Anacostia, D.C. in 2019. Eric's card went to Joe Simmons, who says he lost everything during his stint in prison. It makes me feel like I'm not the only one in this predicament. Um, makes me feel that I have hope. 
Simmons picked up his car along with a hot lunch. Good, how are you doing? You're very well. At A-SPAN, a homeless services center in Arlington. Second Story Cards is delivering nearly 1,000 cards to the homeless throughout the DMV this week. A very special holiday greeting just for you. Damascus Romaselli can't remember the last time. You are worthy and you are strong. Words meant so much to him. It gives me something to smile about that this person I never met um, will write this and I've been homeless 10 years off and on. So, so, very touching. Sometimes all we need on the darkest of days is a candle to light our way and to know that we are not alone. I'm my own family, but I see I have somebody else that cares, and that matters most to me. Jay Korf, ABC 7 News. Let's be honest. Good morning, young lady. Washington, D.C., a city renowned for power suit wearing workaholics, is not exactly known for being overly friendly. Good morning, young lady. Good morning. But Larry Tut believes there's purpose in placing politeness over convention. Good morning. They might be feeling down. I'm going to brighten their day up. Good morning. I see a lot of smiles. Beautiful smile. Everyone that I know that Good morning. knows Larry says that he's been here forever. Good morning. Good morning, sir. All right, boss. You're right. Good morning. Every morning, Monday through Friday, Good morning, sir. you'll find this 64-year-old sitting at 15th and K Streets. I'm blessed to see that pretty smile. Yes, man. Welcoming commuters to another day. The little girl say, Daddy, they go to good morning, man. Oh, man, that made me feel so good, man. He never forgets a face. Good morning, young lady. Where's the twin at? Uh-huh. She moved, she gone. It's amazing what happens when you take just a moment to be nice. All right, sir. Day after day for six years. I look forward to seeing him every every day I'm here, you know? Electrician Tom King is one of Larry's best buddies. Two years ago, maybe, Larry? So we've been friends ever since. He makes sure the good morning man is taken care of. Did you eat yet today? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe King's way of paying back kindness. Larry doesn't ask anybody for anything. He just sits out here and brightens everyone's day. I stay out here all day long. And passers-by give Larry just enough so he can get by, following a lifetime of setbacks. Right here, what kept me going to the graveyard and back to prison. Tut watched his best friend die right in front of him in Vietnam from a booby trap bomb. Man, that's so long ago, I don't even like to talk about that. He says he returned home shattered from PTSD, got hooked on drugs, could not keep a job, struggled with his mental health, and spent a decade in prison on a burglary conviction. I wanted to do better. I ain't want to go back to jail. Several years ago, Larry Tut was homeless. He was sleeping here in McPherson Square. Tut, a person of faith his entire life, says one morning he awoke to the voice of God, telling him to walk across the street to 15th and K and start saying good morning to people. And that's when everything changed. And ever since then, I've been coming down faithful. Good morning. Larry Tut says the relationships he built out here landed him a small apartment, and more than anything, gave him a purpose. This is my family here. I love these people. I don't know, I don't know what I do out. Hey, Larry. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. Let's be honest. It's refreshing in this city of power brokers and policymakers that a man once lost and broken is the one brightening our days. Good morning. Good morning. He gives a small town feel to this little corner and Northwest. I'm Jay Korf. That's what they call me, the good morning man. For ABC 7 News. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Swing and a fly ball to deep to center. Maddox going back near the warning track. He's there. He's got it. The memorabilia in Ernie Kiger's home in suburban Maryland. Well, we have some uh, original Washington Senators hats here. Include authentic game day apparel worn by Kiger's childhood heroes. One of the Senators' all-time favorite players, Eddie Brinkman, wore this jersey 
when he was a rookie in 1962. While Kiger cherishes his old pennants and programs, so don't they belong in a museum? They don't belong in my closet. He owns a key piece of Washington Senator's history like none other. Fast hands to the third. Baker to the hole. Long throw. Not in time. He beat it out of base head. A moment in time 48 years ago that still gives him pause. Most um, painful broken heart I ever had. The Senators left RFK Stadium and DC in 1971 for Texas. Kiger, a teenager at the time, was at their final game. There's a long drive to left field. This one is going, going, it is going. What you're hearing is the original radio broadcast of that game, a one of a kind recording that Kiger owns. He obtained the reels while working as a DJ at WWDC in the 1980s. It was a glorious thing to bring our senators back to life. But in the ninth inning, with the senators leading, fans resentful the team was abandoning DC rampaged. The players now are clearing the field as pandemonium has broken loose. Police are trying to restore order, but the crowd continues to mill all around the field. And reinforcements have been called, and hopefully the field will be cleared. They ripped off bases and dismantled the scoreboard, forcing the Senators to forfeit. No one believed that there would not be Major League Baseball in the nation's capital. But it's sad to report there no longer is. The sting of losing the Senators has come full circle for Ernie Kiger. But to me, it is my childhood, it is my family, it is my hometown. This now rabid Washington Nationals fan is going to all the team's World Series home games to watch a ball club rewriting history. Anything can happen here. We can win this. We could be the Cinderella. This could be our year. I'm Jay Korf. Into the left field for a base hit. For ABC 7 News. Easily, as Burroughs throws the ball into Toby Harris. And right now joining me is one of the true Washington Nationals super fans, season ticket holder Peg Adler, from the beginning, from day one. Yes. Your feelings in your heart right now? I, I felt all along if we could just stay in the fight that we had a chance, that we were not done yet. And you just have to come here and be part of the joy of the park and the fans and believe and put the rally peanuts down there for something to believe in and focus and it was electric here tonight and tomorrow is going to be amazing. Now, rally peanuts, there's a lot of superstitions out there. You may have probably one of the best. Explain your rally peanuts. F.P. Santangelo always talks on TV about the rally napkin, the rally pigeon, whatever. We happened in, in 2012, right as we were clinching, to be in an exciting game and I got home and I was still clutching a peanut in my pocket after I drove 125 miles home. It became a rally peanut and to this day it sits on top of a bottle in front of my TV. So then we started lining them up on the rail in front of my seats for the different games. And now they're legend. Whenever I go on away trips, I always put them on the Nats dugout and people on Twitter look for the rally peanuts. Well, let's walk down and show them the rally peanuts, the rally peanuts really quickly. Go now, so what she did tonight was she has a different way that she sets up the rally peanuts every game. And her section's actually, I think, like 204, but in this case, she's behind home plate. So explain the setup for the rally peanuts. Initially, we had them kind of in a wavy pattern, and, and we gave up two runs in the first inning. So I changed it up a little bit, and I put them in rows of three outs. And I started adding at the top of each inning. I added three and added three. And the folks down here watched them close, and they guarded them. They made sure the beer guys didn't knock them over. And everybody began to believe in the peanuts. And, the, and everybody down here was watching the peanuts and cheering for the peanuts. And it's just something to believe in. It is something to focus and believe on. And uh, there they are, the rally peanuts. They'll be there tomorrow night, too. Peg Adler, what an amazing story. And I think that more than anything, whether it actually has an effect or not, it involves us in the process and it allows us to do something that you said so eloquently. It allows us to believe. Yes, to believe and, and, and take in the joy of just being in the ballpark and, and, and enjoying the game. And what a year. It has been an amazing year. Regardless of how the market night comes out, this has been an amazing season. Thank you, Peg Adler, season ticket holder. She'll be back for Game 7. We'll be back for Game 7. Back to you guys.